Who owns a semi-automatic 40 caliber pistol? Anybody? I bet you a lot of you do. Or at least you want to buy one. You're pretty familiar with the 40 caliber, right? How many law enforcement agencies across the world use the 40 caliber as their primary firearm? Hmm? Thousands? How many millions of people own this firearm? Millions? Well, guess what? I'm going to tell you a story right now. It's called the 1986 Miami Shootout. We are in the 25-year anniversary of the Miami Shootout, the most violent sh shootout within the FBI ever, bar none. Okay, let me pan out here and tell you this story. I'm going to be quick and move on here. It's got two parts, my story. The first version is the actual shootout, 1986, and the second version is how the 40 caliber was developed because of the shootout. Now let me tell you what took place and put your mindset back to 1986, the mid-1980s. I mean, did you ever see the movie Scarface? Al Pacino, remember? Well, that's how it really was. I mean, those the 1980s in Miami, pretty, pretty dangerous place to live. As a matter of fact, when I did my research on the story, I was watching some newsreels of, of the actual news that took place in the, in the 80s. Um, if, if there was a, a murder, it didn't even hit the news. It had to be five or six or seven deaths in, in a bad crime for it to even hit the news that day because there was so much violent crime going on between all the criminals. It was just a war zone in Miami in the 80s. Still pretty dangerous today, by the way. No wonder why I carry so many guns. At least two guns and two knives. Anyway, 25-year anniversary, most violent FBI shootout ever. Why did it happen? Let's talk about it. Well, on... Around, it was April 11th, around 10 a.m., the FBI, their intelligence, realized that, well, we know about these two bad guys who are robbing banks, they're doing carjackings, and we got their car, we, we got to make on their car now, one of the stolen cars they had. So they figured, all right, there's two of them in one car, let's get eight FBI agents, two in each car, so they had four cars, and here's a little visual effect for you. I'm going to zoom in on this. The yellow is the two bad guys. So what they did was, right there, what the FBI did was the two cars on each side rammed into the yellow one, which was the two bad guys, forced them into a tree. And they figured, all right, this will be an easy bust. Eight on two. We're all armed. We've got our 357s, but they were loaded with 38 plus P's. They also had 9 millimeters, the, the FBI, and they also had some shotguns with, with double up buck. Yeah, we're pretty well armed. We can take on two guys. Didn't go too well. Like I said, the most violent shootout. At the end of this video, I'm going to tell you where to go on YouTube to watch uh, a portion of a made for TV movie. Someone uploaded an eight minute scene from that movie of the actual shootout. And I want you to see that so you can really understand what, what took place that day and why the FBI ultimately came up with uh, a solution to their 38 plus P. They went to Smith basically begging, help us out, man. We need, we need a stronger load here. Well, let's, get to the, let's go back to the shootout story. Okay, I'm going to pan out. And what you're looking at there, by the way, on the right was the 40 caliber I opened up with, an HK. HK40. And look on the look on the slide there. See it says Smith and Wesson. Right there on a German gun. We know Smith and Wesson made the 40 caliber. And there on the left is the 10 millimeter. If it wasn't for that 10 millimeter, also we would not have the 40 caliber. Okay, let me get in position here and I'll tell you the story. So I told you a little bit already. The four cars bash into the the, the two bad guys, and uh, one of the mistakes the FBI made, by the way, was one of the FBI agents had his had his 357 revolver on the passenger seat sitting there loose. Mistake. That's mistake one they made. And by the way, I'm not saying the, the FBI did a bad job. They just they were just in a bad situation. They weren't expecting. They did an excellent job, and they were very brave. As a matter of fact, as we go on with the story, you're going to realize how resilient the FBI was that day. And it's amazing only two were were, were, were killed. But you don't put your gun on the seat because even if you stop on a red, at a red light, it can go flying to the floorboard. And in this case, that's what happened. They're not that they went to a red light, but when they bashed that car, the, the, the agent's revolver went flying down to the floorboard. He, was, he was, had no weapon. He, that's it. 
and he was one of the ones that were not injured. One of the eight that was not injured, seven were injured. He was the only one not injured. I don't know exactly how that worked out, but here's the story, and here's how it broke. All right? April 11th, 1986, 25 years ago. Two FBI agents were killed and five wounded in Miami during a confrontation with, FB, with, uh, with robbery suspects. This is the news story. Prior to the shootings, the agents, along with officers with the, with the police department, were conducting a mobile surveillance attempting to locate these two males believed to have committed a number of violent bank robberies and armored car robberies. Okay, and the story goes on here. The, the two bad guys, the ages, they were 32 and 34. Now, when they emerged, when, when they bashed the bad guys with the car and to the tree, the FBI was not expecting this, that the two bad guys emerged with some major, major firepower. Let me tell you what the two bad guys were carrying. Their names, the names Matlix, he died ultimately of six shots. Now he was being hit with 38 plus P's, he was being hit with nine millimeters, and he was being hit with double up buck shotguns, shells. Uh, he only ultimately got off one round, the bad guy during the whole firefight. He was killed earlier during the firestorm. The other bad guy's name was Platt. Now this guy, oh boy, oh my gosh, he was devastating. He was relentless and he would not go down. It ultimately took 12 hits to bring down Platt. And he railed off, I'll tell you right now what he railed off. First of all, he had a, a 357 Magnum loaded with, mag, with mags, fired three of those only. Then he realized, I better shoot my other 357, uh, Smith & Wesson. Shot three of those rounds. Then he goes, uh-oh. I think I'll pull out my, uh, my 223 Remington carbine, my Ruger Mini 14. And then he shot off at least 42 rounds of a high-powered rifle. <laughs> Just taking out agents after agents. Actually, one of the agents was severely injured just from shrap metal from a near miss from the, th from the 223 round. So that's what the bad guys were carrying. And I told you that one died of six, six wounds. The other died, ultimately, of 12 wounds. Of the eight FBI agents, um, I'm not going to give you all their names. I'm just going to go quickly here. Two were killed, both by the 223. One was a headshot, one was a chest shot. One had a serious injury. You can fathom this, getting hit with a 223 in the groin. Uh, I believe he was paralyzed. And the, the others were just severely injured um, with the 223 bullets. All of them were by the 223 bullets. I mean, one of them got hit in the arm and he almost died in critical condition just from all the massive blood loss. All right, so a devastating attack. You can watch the video. I'll tell you at the end which link to go to. Now let's talk about what happened in the aftermath and what the conclusions were of the FBI. At the time, their standard issue as far as a caliber was the 38 plus P running at 158 grains. It was known as the FBI load. For decades that's what they used. No problems, no major issues until this. Until this day when someone comes out with a 223 and all of a sudden these guys were not on drugs by the way. The two bad guys they were not drinking, they were not on drugs, they were on adrenaline. It just goes to show if you don't hit the, the, the central nervous system, the CNS, these, it's going to take a lot to take someone down if they're just a psychopath and they're not going to want to die and they're resilient to just keep coming after you and coming after you. So, what, what the FBI said was, let's do some series of tests. We need to, we need to go to Smith & Weston and say, hey, and that's what they did. Well, let's do a series of tests. We're thinking about the 9mm round, we're thinking about the 45 caliber round. And so, Simultaneously, one of the FBI agents, uh, the name uh, was John Hall, he said, well, let me, uh, I, own, uh, I own this gun, this exact gun. I own this Colt Delta Elite 10 millimeter, and it's pretty powerful, fellow FBI agents. Why don't we put this in the mix and let this be part of the testing along with the 45 and the 9 millimeter. Let's put the 10 millimeter in there. And as we know, the 10 millimeter was invented um, a few years prior to the 1986 shootout in Miami. It was invented by Jeff Cooper. I did a video on that. Here is a whole box of 10 millimeters. I just love the way that looks by the way. Okay, so 
now we have a contest going on with Smith & Wesson you know wanting to of course develop a caliber for the FBI and the FBI did say we like the 10 millimeter but it's got a little bit of a punch you know and I don't, I don't understand that part of it it is the most powerful Glock made by the way um, the Glock 29 and they said it's a little bit of a punch so can you tone down the 10 millimeter cartridge a little bit and they did so they kept the 10 millimeter cartridge and the FBI ran with it and it was uh, a cartridge that was running at about a thousand feet per second look at today's rounds here there's double tap there look what modern technology does with a 10 millimeter 1600 feet per second boy oh boy you wonder why I love the 10 millimeter so much is my round of choice you get some bad guys like that guy uh, that wouldn't go down it took, it took 12 rounds to kill him I don't know if they would have had a full blown 10 millimeter like this the FBI back then things might have been different but you know they were up against a 223 so Smith & Wesson says alright we got a 9 millimeter in the mix we got a 45 in the mix we got this 10 millimeter the FBI says okay we'll do the 10 millimeter and for a couple of years they ran with the lower the lower power 10 millimeter and then they ultimately said you know it's still a little bit too much power and what Smith said was alright this is what we'll do we'll come up with a load and let's zoom in on these two rounds here the one on the left is a 10 millimeter a big boy see how much bigger it is than the one on the right the 40 caliber basically a 10 millimeter is a 40 caliber on steroids and a 40 caliber is a baby 10 millimeter same cartridge same dimensions except it's shorter okay and that's how we got the 40 caliber for real this is that's that's it the FBI said okay this is we're gonna run with the 40 caliber and uh, and the rest is history there you have my take on the Miami shootout what I'd like you to do now is go to Google and Google the Miami shootout click on videos and go to the top video and it's an eight minute long video that someone uploaded I, I can't upload that kind of stuff it's not right it's copyrighted material but there was a movie made on this shootout uh, it was called in the line of duty so someone uploaded the eight minute actual shootout scene you know it's, it's, a, it's a low budget movie it's not some Hollywood blockbuster but it really gives you a good idea of these two criminals and what they went through for and all the rounds they took and what it took to, what, for them to finally be killed it's, it's really amazing so Google the Miami shootout click video go to the top one it's eight minutes long and watch that video and you'll get a grasp as, as to what I'm trying to show you and tell you here and this is how the 40 caliber came about was because of this all right I'm checking out weaponseducation.com hope you learned a little bit about the 40 caliber and this is the 25 year anniversary and hopefully um, those officers who did survive or still alive I do not know and uh, the officers who died that day thank you for your service FBI agents checking out please tell your friends please subscribe bye bye